Hi, I'm the History Guy. I have a degree in history and I love history. And if you love history too, this is the channel for you. Few events in American history had as much impact on the future of the nation as the war with Mexico in 1846. And yet in America, we hardly study that war. You can take an entire class on U.S. history in high school or even college and maybe not even hear mention of the war with Mexico. And that might be because it was a long time ago. It might be because it was overshadowed by the Civil War, which came about a decade and a half later. But it is a war that we should not forget. It largely defines our relationship with Mexico, where the war is not forgotten at all. It's sometimes called the war that America can't remember and that Mexico can't forget. It redefined our nation. It led to the acquisition of the American West, the Southwest all the way up into Colorado and Utah were acquired as a result of the war with Mexico. And while it briefly represented a period of national unity where the nation came together in common cause, the army that fought for America in the Mexican War was an all-volunteer force, it also represented some of the divisions that were eventually driving the nation towards the Civil War. And nothing represents that more starkly than the little-known fact that one of the very best units fighting for Mexico in the Mexican-American War was a group of Americans who had deserted from the American army in order to fight on behalf of Mexico. And who they were and why they chose to fight for Mexico says a lot about what was going on in America in the 1840s and something about what would drive America to the Civil War in the 1860s. And that's one of the reasons why the St. Patrick's Battalion deserves to be remembered. The core of the group had actually joined the Mexican army before war was even declared, especially a group of Irishmen who had deserted General Zachary Taylor's Army of the Rio Grande under the leadership of a man named John Riley. And they were actually fighting for Mexico in the first battle of the war, the siege of Fort Texas. And the fact that they deserted before war was actually declared would become important later. Their first battle as a recognized unit of the Mexican army was the Battle of Monterey, where they manned a battery of artillery, and that's where they started to gain their reputation as one of the best units in the Mexican army. They fought very bravely and in fact drove back a couple of the mass attacks in the center of the town. And yet their effort was not enough to keep the Mexican army from deciding that they would retreat and abandon their strong position in Monterey. And they distinguished themselves yet again in the next battle, the Battle of Buena Vista, where they not only inflicted a huge amount of American casualties and helped to capture an American artillery battery, but they withstood several counterattacks. And yet one more time, their heroics were not enough to keep the Mexican army from defeat. In the battle report, the commander of the Mexican forces, General Francisco Meja, described their action as worthy of the most consummate praise. And several received decorations for bravery. As the war went on, they would continue to attract deserters, and they became known as one of the best units in the Mexican army, resilient fighters, although part of that probably had to do with the fact that they knew that if they were captured, they would likely be hung as traitors. And that would come to a test after the bloody Battle of Churubusco in 1847. Fighting in the town center, the San Patricios held the center for a long time. But when the Mexican army that was with them tried to surrender as they ran out of ammunition, the San Patricios refused to allow them to surrender, and at least twice shot dead Mexican officers who tried to raise a white flag. In the battle, 85 of the San Patricios were captured by the American army, and in the bloody fight, nearly two-thirds of the battalion were either killed or captured, with only about another 85 escaping with the Mexican army. The San Patricios who were captured were put before a military tribunal, but it was a trial where they were not allowed to offer any defense. Fifty were sentenced to death. It was the largest mass execution in American history. All but a few were sentenced to death by hanging, even though contemporary articles of war stipulated firing squad. The Americans were in no mood for charity, given all the casualties that the St. Patrick's Battalion had caused. And yet a few were spared the death penalty, including John Riley. And the reason was because they had deserted before war was declared. And so their crime was simple desertion, whereas the others had been charged with deserting and joining the enemy in time of war. Still, even the ones who were not executed were treated brutally. They were whipped 50 times. They were branded on the face with a D for deserter, and then they were jailed indefinitely.
The executions occurred over three days, but the last 30, according to the orders of the American general, Winfield Scott, were hung in full view of both armies during the Battle of Chapultepec. So why did they desert the American army to fight on behalf of the Mexicans? As you would guess from the name the St. Patrick's Brigade, many of them were Irish, but not exclusively. There were also German-Americans, Italian-Americans, French-Americans. There were even a few disenfranchised Americans, like escaped slaves from the South. But overwhelmingly, they were new immigrants to America. They had been in America less than a year and had not had time to form attachments to the country. In fact, it was common practice in America to sign up immigrants even as they were walking off the boat into the U.S. Army. In fact, very few of them were actually citizens. And the Mexican army had offered some strong incentives for Americans to desert and join the Mexican army. They promised citizenship. They promised land grants. They paid better than the American army. Many of these people had come to America because they were fleeing poverty in Europe and economic incentives were a powerful motivational force. But a key factor was that the San Patricios were overwhelmingly Catholic, while the United States was largely a Protestant nation with a strong anti-Catholic sentiment. Many of the San Patricios had faced abuse at the hands of American officers who trusted neither foreigners nor Catholics, and their religion was suppressed. They were forced to attend Protestant religious services. Is it really a wonder that these people, barely having entered the United States, found more affinity with Catholic Mexico than with the Protestant United States, especially when our justification for invading Mexico was so questionable? The Treaty of Guadalupe, which ended the Mexican-American War, stipulated that those San Patricios that were still in the custody of the American army would be returned to Mexico. Among them was John Riley, who went back to Mexico and served for many years as an officer in the regular Mexican army. Some of the San Patricios returned to their homes in Europe, but others made homes in Mexico and made good on those land grants that had been promised them. Both sides agree that the St. Patrick's Battalion fought very bravely, but they were never nearly enough to turn the tide in what was a very unequal conflict. To the Americans, of course, the St. Patrick's Battalion were traitors who betrayed their country, but to the Mexicans, they were heroes who came to them in their hour of need. The Mexican army was largely made up of poorly trained conscripts, and the St. Patrick's Battalion was one of the few veteran battalions upon which the Mexican army could depend. The desertion of the St. Patrick's Battalion suggests that the American army was a harsh place and there was lots of desertion, but that's not really the case. In fact, it was an all-volunteer force that was brought together by patriotic zeal, and there was very little desertion during the Mexican-American War. There was, in fact, less desertion during the war than there was among the regular army in time of peace. It was instead the Mexican army made up largely of impressed conscripts that had constant troubles with desertion. No, the, the San Patricios did not desert because of heart conditions. They deserted because of conscience. And part of that was because the Irish among them saw some similarity in what America was doing in Mexico with what they saw Great Britain doing in Ireland. But part of that was because of slavery. And their Catholic faith was offended by the institution of slavery. They could not square with their conscience, fighting on behalf of a nation that practiced the institution of slavery against a nation that had banned slavery. While the war originally brought together America in some common cause, it actually was revealing the conflicts that were tearing the nation apart, because the cause of the Mexican-American War was largely westward expansion, and that raised the question about whether all those new western states were going to be free states or slave states. In fact, the war was largely a machination of Democratic President James K. Polk, who was hoping that those states would be slave states and strengthen the hand of the slave states in the United States. And instead, the fight that would come after would reveal all of those chasms that would eventually lead to the Civil War. And if you think about it, the cause for which the San Patricios were fighting on behalf of Mexico looks very much like the differences of conscience that drove the U.S. Civil War. And so, in that extent, you can say that really the San Patricios were firing the first shots of the U.S. Civil War. I'm the History Guy and hope you enjoyed this edition of my channel, 5 Minutes of History, short snippets of forgotten history, 5 to 10 minutes long. If you did enjoy, please go ahead and click that thumbs up button that is there on your left. If you have any questions or comments or want to suggest other topics for the History Guy, feel free to write them in the comment section. I will be happy to respond. And if you'd like 5 minutes more forgotten history, all you have to do is click subscribe.